Good morning and welcome to Rosemead Homestead. We are so glad that you are here. I have had the most fun in recent days, a couple of weeks, researching pumpkins. I'll tell you, I had no idea about the magnificence of this little squash. Um, pumpkins have an incredible amount of nutrition. Uh, today's video definitely goes toward food security and self-reliance and also emergency preparedness. How do we use the, the things that we have stored in our food storage to use what we have to make some pretty nice meals that will be nutritious and also will look good. And so today, in using this pumpkin powder, we'll, we're going to do three things. And every one of them uses ingredients that we can use either off-grid and also from our food storage, provided we have some way of baking off-grid, which of course I am a proponent of, and we'll be doing some more things on that in later videos. And so we're gonna get to our uh, recipes using powders when we come right back. powder that I have left. You may remember if you watched our drying and powdering pumpkin video, I had over a quart, almost a quart and a half of, of freeze dry and uh, about half a cup of this one, which is the dehydrated uh, pumpkin powder. So I have been practicing and practicing. Now here are the mysteries for today. What do you think this mix is going to make? We're going to put it together in a few minutes, but be thinking about what you think what your prediction is on what this one is. And of course, this one is another mix. All the dry ingredients are in here, including egg powder. We're gonna put that one together in just a minute. So, but first, I want to show you something that did not come from a mix. Our pumpkin breadsticks. They are wonderful, and I will put the recipe below the description so that you can have it. But if you already have a great um, breadstick recipe, all I did with this I just simply added a third of a cup of pumpkin powder to this and then made it like normal. And then I brushed the tops with ghee, and I use ghee instead of butter because I'm not sure we're gonna have butter available. Unless you have a cow of your own and make your own butter, it very well may be that butter may not be available to us, which is why I use ghee. And we do have a video on how to make ghee from butter. And um, it looks just exactly like butter. Um, it just removes the milk solids and therefore makes it shelf stable for months, even years. Um, and so we have a year supply of ghee, both for table use and for cooking use. So I brush the tops with melted ghee and then I sprinkle them with uh, pink Himalayan sea salt and a little bit of um, Italian seasoning. This is our savory addition to the three recipes today. And so these would be fabulous with any number of meals. All of the ingredients are directly out of food storage, the basic food storage staples that all of us should, um, I hope that we all have in our food storage. So I'm gonna set these aside. Jim already wants another one. This made a dozen. If you count fast, you notice that there are 10 here. Hmm, I wonder what happened to the other two. Now for mystery powder number one. I have been working for about a month on a recipe for scones that I could make up in a, a mix like this that using the dry powders and then adding the other, the wet ingredients after I put this in a bowl. I already have all of the ingredients for this in our food storage. So whether it's a mix, or whether I pull everything off the shelves, doesn't matter because I have everything. So what you'll do is just pour this into a bowl. Then we just add two more ingredients. We add a half a cup of ghee. That's what this is, this is ghee. And doesn't it look just like butter? I use it for anything that I would use butter for. 
And so I'm just going to knock these right into the flour. And they, I, it has been refrigerated because um, it's better when it's cold like that. And then I'm just going to cut that ghee right into the flour. Now this will take me a minute. So I'll come back and show you when this is all mixed in together. This is finished. It is now very mealy. That ghee is cut in with the flour dry ingredients. And the other thing that we need to do is this scone recipe is the foundation for it. But the cool thing is that at this point you can add whatever type of fruit or vegetable that you might want to include here. You can add jams, you can add applesauce, you can add crushed peaches, you can add apple bits. Today we're going to add extra pumpkin. And so these are going to be pumpkin scones. Now this is the dehydrated pumpkin. I'm going to um, rehydrate it before we put it in. I'm not going to put it in as a powder. I'm going to start with a tablespoon. One of the things that I have learned with powders over all of my experimenting recently is that just because I have the mathematical calculation of what the rehydration rate is, doesn't mean that that's the way it acts in a recipe. And so I am now to the point where I'm pretty much treating everything um, I, that I'm doing with this pumpkin powder by um, doing just a little bit of rehydration at a time. All right, I think that this is just about where I want it. And in it goes. Pumpkin scones. And then the recipe also calls for a half a cup of water plus some additional if necessary. So we are going to start with a half a cup and see where that takes us. Now when we're done here, this hopefully will be about the thickness of a very thick cake batter. Not this thick. Needs more water. Now remember, I have powdered eggs in here too that also are soaking up some of that water. And I have powdered milk in here that's soaking up some of that water. Pretty color. All right, we are just about there. All right, this is more like a biscuit consistency, a drop biscuit consistency than a thick cake batter. All right, this is perfect. Now, <clears throat> I am also going to put in this extract half a teaspoon and this will also be in my food storage and this is the Friori de Sicilia and I'll stir this in oh the smell is fabulous I can't wait to taste these we've not done pumpkin yet we've done <clears throat> We've done applesauce, we've done strawberry, we've done, I don't remember, but I practice and practice on gym. Okay, now look at this cute little scone pan that Jim got for me. This is just exactly right. And so this makes 16 scones. So I'm just going to take some time and drop this batter right into here and I'll show it to you before, right before we put it in the oven. So we'll be back. All right, here we go. These are all ready to go into the oven. The oven has preheated to 400. They will bake probably 16, 18 to 25 minutes. And I use a toothpick inserted in the center when it comes out clean to test. So I'm going to put these in the oven and we will be back when they come out of the oven. I just this second took them out of the oven. Are they just beautiful or what? So I'm just gonna pull one out so that you can see these are cake-like and they're not very sweet because this whole recipe has only, so it looks just like that, 
So they're just slightly browned on the bottom. And I'm gonna put this back because I want the beginning picture in this pan. And then I'll take them out once, uh, once we've taken that picture. And what you can do with these scones, we just eat them this way. Um, we're cutting down on sweets or trying to watch our sweets, but you can put frosting over the top of them if you wish. Even pumpkin frosting with a little bit of the pumpkin powder in with the confectioner's sugar. So that's our second recipe, and um, it's still really hot. So I am just going to move it off to the side here so we can see what is next. And <clears throat> what is next is our mystery mix. So what do you think this is? Maybe if I run through the ingredients, some of you I'm sure already have it, and you can, in your comments, <clears throat> You can tell everybody when you first guessed what it was, whether it was before I listed the ingredients or after. Okay, so starting from the bottom, we have pumpkin powder, sugar, brown sugar, and on top of the brown sugar layer, which you cannot see very well, is some cinnamon, ginger, and cloves. Oh, that should have given it away. Then we have powdered milk, and powdered eggs. So what do you think it is? If you said pumpkin pie mix, you are absolutely right. I am so excited about this. Um, poor Jim <clears throat> has had to go through several iterations of this mix development. Um, one of them was pretty yucky. And then finally, late last night, we hit it. And so I'm so, so glad. And so you can make up this mix and just keep it on your counter. And so this is most definitely something for emergency preparedness that would be so easy just to have vacuum sealed in jars. Now, having a mix like this and vacuum sealed in jars doesn't appeal to everybody. So what else could you do? Okay, oh, it's the brown sugar. Let me get a fork. So all we have to add to this mix is water, and that's it. But I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute because I wanna talk about variations. Um, variations on our food storage shelves. So if this does not appeal to you in a form like this, and you still have pumpkin powder, one of the things that you could do is reconstitute your pumpkin into the puree. And this is reconstituted. This is what actually what we did in um, the video um, on drying and powdering when we demonstrated how to reconstitute. So you can reconstitute the pumpkin and then if you have on your shelf um, evaporated milk and if you have either fresh eggs, which is it, it's unlikely that we'll have much access to fresh eggs unless we have chickens in times of um, uh, grid down situation, but even then you could substitute over the powdered eggs if you wish. So there are ways that you can substitute in other things that you have on hand for pumpkin pie, um, but I just wanted to see if I could actually do this mix. And ta-da, here it is, and I'm so excited about this. Um, but I can tell you right now, I will not use the brown sugar in the mix because it dries out too fast. Because that's only been in that jar for like half an hour, maybe an hour. Okay, to this mix, I am starting with two cups of water. Now this was one where I worked and worked on this, as Jim will attest. And um, the first time I didn't put enough water in, even though I followed the mathematical formula, that we developed in the other video. It still wasn't enough, but I cooked it anyway, and it was like a cake instead of pie. It was gross, actually. Okay, now I'm getting it down to where I can start seeing the viscosity, and I want this to look just exactly like, as if I were making it from Libby's pumpkin out of the can. And if you're like me, you've made that recipe hundreds of times. Way too thick right here. So, I'm going to add some more. And this really had all of the ingredients. Now, there's no such thing as powdered evaporated milk. And so, um, what I did was I doubled the amount of powdered milk that I put in there because a cup calls for three tablespoons, 
reconstituted into milk and I put in six tablespoons to make it a little bit thicker. Okay. Still not quite right. All right, adding more water. And this is exactly what we had to do last night when we were developing the final one that worked. Because the one with Libby's is a little bit runny, but it's not water thin. The true test is in the taste. So close, so close. Just a tad more water. And you'll have to do this individually. That's it. Okay. I just happen to have a pie shell ready to go. And I will put the link to the video where you can find this pie crust recipe. Oh my goodness. It is perfect. Perfect amount. All right, this is going in the oven, and we will come back when it's ready to take out. Well, here we are to the end. Here's the pumpkin pie. It turned out fantastic. Um, I have noticed that when I do these pies, well, pumpkin with powders, it does take just a little bit longer in the oven. This one took about an hour instead of 45 minutes. Um, but it's still, I can't wait to taste it. It just smells fabulous. Um, you may notice over here that the scones I took out of the pan so that they would not get damp because of the uh, staying inside the pan. But if you count, you'll notice that there's four missing. Well, we couldn't resist. They are fantastic. So I was really, really pleased how those turned out as well. And then the breadsticks, um, we've been eating those too and they are great. When we have pumpkin powder, there's so much versatility. This just scrapes the surface of um, what is available out there. I looked at a lot of pumpkin soups. You know, it's fairly easy to convert a regular pumpkin recipe that calls for puree into something that we can use powder with because um, it takes about a tablespoon of powder that you ran through your dehydrator and about a third of a cup if you did it in a freeze dryer to equal about one cup of puree. And so if you kind of use that rough guesstimate, then you can really convert any recipe. So I hope you have fun with pumpkin powder. I hope you are uh, putting things in your storage, in your food storage for uh, food security that will um, allow you to be versatile in the things that you prepare for your family. So thank you for being with us for this really fun video, and we will see you next time.